And that is Mr. Ian McPherson. That's quite excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, I'm often puzzled when I'm at my local drugstore, my local apothecary, if you will, and I see that they're selling a product called baby oil. Why do babies need to be oiled, please? It seems to me that if I were holding a baby that had been oiled, it would be significantly more likely to slip out of my hands. How is this advantageous? Have you ever noticed that people from, from England, people from the United Kingdom, they don't say extraordinary, they say extraordinary. Why doesn't anybody tell them that they're wrong? <laughs> Does anybody, has anybody in the audience ever seen The Late Show on CBS? It begins at 11.35. Does anybody know of this show? <laughs> Who is the host of this show, please? David Letterman. How is his name pronounced correctly, please? David Letterman. No, it is David Letterman. <laughs> Imagine that your name happened to be da David Letterson. Wouldn't that be a fun coincidence? Why, at parties, all of your friends would be asking you to do impersonations. You would show up at the party and people would say, Hey, Letterson, let's hear that Letterman impression that we love so much. And so on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Some, something else that I've never, I've never quite understood is the concept of becoming aroused. All the time in the media we are bombarded with this message of being aroused. Oh, I am so aroused, as people would say. Is it possible that I could become aroused? What are the circumstances under which this might occur? Thank you. <laughs> does does anybody does anybody remember the talk show the talk show host Phil Donahue? <laughs> Phil Donahue, yes. I would like now please to do my impersonation of Phil Donahue. Thank you. <laughs> ah! You know, it, it, always, it always annoys me when people confuse the name of the food that they are eating with the name of the place where they purchased it. Why, just last week, I ran into an acquaintance of mine while he was eating his lunch, and I said, Say, that looks tasty. What have you got there? And he said, Wendy's. And I said, No, you are not eating a Wendy's. You're eating a hamburger and french fries. <laughs> I, thank you. You're, you're most welcome, yes. I, I, I'd like to conclude with a joke now, if I may. A piece, of, a piece of broccoli moves to a new town where he doesn't know anybody and he has no friends. And very shortly thereafter, he meets a mushroom. And the mushroom says, yes, I will be your friend. What do you say do we go to the library? So they go, to the, they go together to the library and do very much reading. And although it's not the piece of broccoli's favorite thing to do, he goes along with it. And then afterwards, Afterwards, the mushroom says, Say, 
wouldn't it be great if we could build a model airplane together? And it, again, it's not the piece of broccoli's favorite thing to do, but he goes along with it. And then he says, the mushroom says, hey, what do you say I call you tomorrow and we can, we can fly kites together? And at this point, the piece of broccoli is fed up and he says, I'm sorry, I don't think we should do that. In fact, I don't think we can be friends. Why not? asks the mushroom. You're boring. And the mushroom replies, no, I'm not. I'm a fun guy. Oh. Oh. Thank, you. Thank, thank you very much for pa patronizing me and pa patronizing this establishment. Thank you. Okay, by now I think we all know the drill, right? Like Lusta. Like Lusta. One more time for Ian McPherson. And his fierce comedy, son. <laughs> Bet you didn't know I was funny, did you, Tom? No, I just did. You see me busting out there and you're like, hey, 